All right. We just had another wonderful <laughs> video by Beth. <clears throat> I don't know if it got cut off in the live stream, but we got another recording, and that's what counts. Right. Um, we are going to wait and see if we're actually online in the chat room. And also, I'm curious if there's an echo. Zay, could you say something so we can have a test on the echo there? Hello. It does look like we're live. And Excellent. Can you hear us? All right. Welcome to World Builders Weekly, start date 47634.44. Uh, we are coming to you live on Star Trek Day. So you might sense a slight theme as we go through things today. I'm Gray. I am the executive director of the uh, Starship World Builders. And over to my, well, on my screen, it's my right, um, is the executive officer and assistant director. Coming to you as a creepy lemur to get today, guys. I um, I really just wanted to feel included, um, and I don't have any Star Trek art, so this is what I came with. I got a lemur and a background. <laughs> so I mean, that's all you need. That's really right. that, that's that's the way it starts. And once you start, you know, it's like it's like having being, a bad day. Grab like, a lemur in the background. Yep. <laughs> it's like yeah. I see. See, Captain Macbeth says. She's a creepy lemur every day. And I was, that's exactly what I said when you told me about that thing. It's like, well, when aren't you a creepy lemur? You know? That's true. I, I do have this tail. Um, I feel like I could hang around on it. It's quite long. It's probably as tall as me, actually. Um, I have ordered her a kid size small in this, and it's it's still big, but See, I have that's the opposite okay. problem. I can't find a onesie that really fits me well enough that has is in anything i always wanted a, um, uh, what is it, a uh, sea otter. That's my favorite oh, animal. That'd be good. That'd be a cute one. I don't, I, uh, yeah, you should, you should, you should find that dream. Make yeah, that, okay. that will be that. my dream. Um, <laughs> but as usual, we are going to start out by talking about our trivia. And here's the old trivia question. And uh, I'll read this one, Zay. Sure. In the 1977 science fiction movie, Roy, in this 1977 science fiction movie, Roy Neary sculpted something out of mashed potatoes during dinner. What is the name of the national monument that he sculpted? Zay, did you know this before you like looked it up? So I know what it's coming from, the movie, um, but I don't. I don't remember what he made. So yeah, I, I actually, I think this was pivotal for me because I, w I did, <laughs> I'm old enough to have seen it in the theater, but <laughs> at the same time, I um, was uh, young enough to be kind of disturbed at this image of adults going off the rails the way that Richard Dreyfus does. And Richard Dreyfus, nobody goes off the rails like Richard Dreyfus. I mean, he, he can really, he knows how to play. So that was that was kind of disturbing, but he uh, sculpts a gigantic, I mean, he's not the only one who does this. Everybody is obsessed with the Devil's Tower because they have to try and make it to the Devil's Tower. Um, and that, of course, is it. And he sculpts it out of uh, mashed potatoes at first, and then he makes, have you seen the movies, eh? Uh, Close Encounters, yeah, yeah, it's it's a really good one. He, he has that living room sculpture, like, in the middle, and, uh, you know, I think if your plants get out of hand, you might end up something with something like that. <laughs> you know, um, this is a minor sidebar to this. Um, so this is Close Encounters of the fourth kind or third kind? Third, third kind. kind. Um, they came out with a movie um, in the 2000s called The Third Kind, or The the fourth kind. God damn it. Help me out here, guys. Anyways, as far as horror movies go, um, it's it's not a remake or anything. It's just kind of one of those alien possessed kind of movies. Um, I think it's called the fourth kind. Uh, it's set up. It has. Um, Is it with Milla it Jovovich? Has, 
Yep. It, yeah, it's, it's really good. It has a lot of really great actors, actually. Um, and it's set up to look like a kind of documentary starring actors. Um, and it's one of those movies that while it's happening, there are a couple pretty scary parts. But it's really later when you're like alone in your bedroom thinking about that movie that it gets you. And um, if you're into kind of creepy thriller horror movies, I'd, I'd recommend it. It's it's definitely not like a gore or a hostile kind of movie. Something um, to watch. It's good. Yeah, something. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Something to watch. Which which reminds me, uh, to give, give credit to, um, uh, we have a, a regular newsletter that's been going out from World Builders Market, and Beth has been absolutely killing it on the... Uh, text there uh, to the point where I'll say if you if you only read the first section if you only click on it to open and read the first section you should do it because when I was proofing it this morning it literally made me laugh out loud and it was a much needed kind of relief so um, and you'll also find something to watch something to listen to and something to make I think is what we have on there so yeah yeah it's uh it's and something fun. to play so yeah. we have generally uh, some good recommendations. Uh, have we have we digressed enough to go on to the um, old trivia now? Yeah, I think so. I'll I'll read this one um, right. for next week's uh, trivia. And if you hear it and you know it, please answer in the private DMs, not on the public chats or the public platforms. It may not be everyone's cup of tea, but it was Captain Picard's when ordering his favorite beverage from the Replicator. In the sci-fi show Star Trek, The Next Generation, what exactly did Captain McCutter ask for? Um, Remember, we that's, put it in the chat. We only put it in the uh, in DMs. Yeah, which I will say, as cautious as we are about that, you guys have been really great about that. This is true. Um, and I, I enjoy looking at the DMs, um, especially since it's kind of like a chance to touch base with old friends. Um, uh, Charlie Johnson answered a uh, trivia question through Twitter a while back. Oh, that's cool. That For you, those of you guys who um, don't know, Charlie Johnson is featured in uh, our uh, clothed gender bender poster of um, uh, her with the uh, Sashura sword yeah. that we sell. It's Starting really cool. By Nicole York, yeah. I will give you a hint on the thing. It is not this. This is coffee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, um, but yes. And of course, we also, since it's the new week, we have a new game of the week coming up. And this is a cool one. It is not Star Trek themed, but we love it anyway. It is a board game of Mistborn. Have you read the Mistborn books at all, Zay? I have not read every single one. I have read I most of them. They're super good. Um, what a cool concept for magic. Um, if you guys haven't read it, there's another one um, reading recommendation. I wouldn't call it quite young adult, but it's if you have like a, a teen. Um, I have a couple of nieces that absolutely loved these these novels. Um, yeah, I think that's one of the ones when I was reading it, I was like, I really want to see this in a movie. I mean, this. Yes. This has all yeah. of my favorite things. I haven't played this game that we that we own of the Smiths Border. Do you have you, Gray? No, this one I have not played. Um, I don't all right, if you guys and do have played the it. the link isn't quite working either. So we will get a different link to you on that one. Um, Mistborn, we will find a new link for you on that. It'll be much easier. There it is. And send that over to you right now in the chat. Thank you, Jokester. There you go. That one will definitely work. Wonderful. Um, yeah, so that's uh, a cool one. But yeah, basically it says um, this game is a game of ne negotiation and dubious alliances. Uh, you must cooperate to solve a myriad of problems threatening the world and compete for the Lord Ruler's favor. 
Um, so very much based off of the novels. Um, three to five players, 14 years plus. That's not something we see a while, so it looks like it can be kind of complex concepts in this game. And it's 30 to 90 minutes. Uh, yeah, looks good. Tell us what you think of that, because I'm curious to play this one, and I have not yet, which it's hard pressed for me to find games in our uh, in our stock that I haven't at least dabbled in. Well, speaking of uh, Zay in weird um, costumes. Oh boy. <laughs> I'm trying to speak of Zay in weird costumes here. Um, quick, talk about the mask while I try and figure out why it's not showing oh. up. <laughs> What are you doing? Um, all right, yeah, so for uh, we have some new fall designs for Mask Hero masks um, in World Builders Market. We did read your guys' suggestions, by the way, on social media for what masks you should see, you would like to see next. Um, what are discussing, we're in the works. I absolutely loved your guys' suggestion of Cinder's smile. So, you know, we'll be taking a look at that. Um, Please don't be too hard on the model that we use for these masks in the store. Um, she's very self-conscious. Uh, you know, yeah, they, you... they have to be on someone's face. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, actually, you're, you are the default model basically because of the constraints of COVID-19. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, so it's harder to get all of the masks all the people. But in case you can't see there, there is a Star Wars Halloween theme mask. Uh, there is a fall leaves, fall leaves, fall leaves theme pattern. And um, we were very, we, we already had this in the works because we were big fans of the Black Panther. Um, but it is a Black Panther mask, which is especially poignant right now, um, given the death of Chadwick Boseman. Um, so yeah, we have those new up on the up there, and we have more coming. We have lady astronaut masks coming out, um, and uh, I frankly, they deserve their own particular thing. Otherwise, we could have brought them out today, but um, I think they deserve their own particular feature because we have some really cool ones, and uh, we are huge fans of Mary Robinette Cole. So we'll have lots of new masks, uh, including easier ways for you to buy other people masks. Uh, don't know what's going on in your neck of the woods, but here in Wisconsin with universities going back um, into session, unfortunately, we've been seeing some more spikes in COVID-19. And so um, we are encouraging people to get masks. And remember, if you do go to the masks there, you can just donate to help us give masks for free. Or if you need one and can't afford one, there's a spot in there where you can just say, I need a mask and you can order one and we'll send it to you. Um, uh, in fact, uh, Zay, you want to talk a little bit about the Roots thing? Yeah, so that's exactly what happened. Um, you know, pretty much no questions asked. If you know an org or a need um, that needs uh, by org and organization um, with a need to fulfill these masks, um, you can just reach out to us. And that's exactly what Roots High did. So Roots High School is a charter school that works outside, um, uh, re revolving around, um, I think, I mean, it revolves around farming, but I believe it's, um, you know, like a more economical, responsible version of farming, um, kind of teaches people about, uh, you know, uh, resourcefulness, local farming, um, they reach out to us and ask us for these masks. And we provided them with, uh, I think about a hundred or close uh, to 79 to be exact. Oh, excuse me. So thank you, Gray. So 79 to cover basically their students and the people that spend time around the students. I did and see on there that while they do have some in person classes, it looks like they're trying to be as accommodating as possible with mm -hmm. some online stuff, which I have to say is wonderful to see because Wisconsin schools have not been, I would say, so forthcoming with letting their students uh, be at, uh, at home and not in crowds. Well, Zay, you can't see it right now, but um, on the screen is 
is a um, nice picture that we got from the person who put us in touch with Roots. Her name is Shauna. Um, this is a guy named Hayes, and he's a student at Roots. He's wearing one of our um, Marvel Comics masks, um, and that's a Roots hoodie he has on there. Um, and they sent this as a way to say thank you. Uh, it was his grandma that actually sent the request oh, to get this. That's nice. So you don't have to be a school official. If you know somebody who needs this kind of stuff, you can definitely uh, let us know, and we would love to help out and uh, you know be be part of the solution, um, or at least of trying to make things a little bit better. Yeah. So, yeah. And again, just to reiterate, guys, um, we are, we have been talking about a couple different organizations. Absolutely, as individuals, you can go there and say, I need a mask as one person who can't afford a mask, and we'll send you that one. Um, yeah. Yep, absolutely. So, um, hey, guess what day it is today? Star Trek! <laughs> yes, it is. Happy Star Trek Day! Um, now, admittedly, there's a bit of crass commercialism in this. Um, CBS is the one who kind of owns all the Star Trek stuff, and uh, they're having a special day today. But, you know, it's, it's like narrated by Will Wheaton, who's a big friend of World Builders. Um, and they're going to have, starting at about noon uh, Pacific time, all kinds of panels and, and shows and things like that. Um, and... Uh, I actually, so <laughs> literally I was raised on Star Trek. Like it was in reruns by the time I was old enough to remember watching TV and I was watching it every night. So I've seen the original series, everyone multiple times. Um, always grew up wanting to be Spock. I think I ended up more of a Kirk, but I don't know. Um, uh, but, uh, it, it was, it was a big part of my life growing up. Uh, literally, I was the kind of geek who would bring the Star Trek technical manual to school with me and would oh draw the cross plans of the starships and design my own and things like that. Um, and uh, Star Trek The Next Generation came out just as I was starting to train to go into the Marine Corps. And so I can remember watching those episodes and I was totally in the, this isn't really Star Trek. What are they trying to do? This is stupid. That guy's not Captain Kirk. Why would anybody like him? Um, so I was definitely not a fan at first. But yeah, it's definitely been a part of my life. But honestly, as, as I've grown older and I've been thinking about it, it, there's a couple of specific things that make me like Star Trek better as an ongoing fandom. Um, and one of them is that it's a team-based show. Now, admittedly, it's a it, it's somewhat stretching it, and I think that especially lately, it's become more and more of a it's about Kirk and Spock, and that's it. Um, but at least, uh, especially in the next generation, it was about an ensemble coming together and everybody having their own weaknesses and strengths and trying to do good things. And the good things weren't conquer the galaxy, fight people, da, 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 although that ended up happening, obviously. Um, but it was about, um, you know, it, it originally was set up as a peaceful thing. You know, they're going around helping people out. Sort of like, the, you know, the Coast Guard in space kind of thing. Um, and uh, so I'll be honest, part of my personal framing of this job that we do here at World Builders is I'm like, we are trying to make the kind of world that Star Trek ends up being, a post-scarcity world where everybody is in included. And, the, and of course, we're not saying we're gonna solve all the problems, but there's this idealism and this base level of, of um, everybody having what they need that I think is really worthwhile. Um, and I would be lying if I didn't say that part of what I think of, of my work every day when I like, you know, come to work with an iPad and, you know, hold up things like this. I, you know, I totally feel like Picard. You can ask Beth when we are talking about whether we're going to send out a um, newsletter or post something, I tend to use the Picard GIF. And I'll be like, make it so, you know, 
or oh, game. My goodness. Uh, yeah, I know. It's 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 pretty 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 yeah. There she goes. Says every single time. Yep. So You know, uh, yeah. I was going to say that uh, we we were prepared. We did you did say something about it being Star Trek day today. But had you just shown up today in this garter, I would have just no questions asked. It's just Grace having a day where he wants to wear this. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's totally fine here and acceptable. <laughs> this is this is true. This is true. Um, and I'll, I'll be honest with you, this uh, this mug here. So this is the USS Wisconsin, which is part of a Starfleet International. It's a it's a, you know, LARPing group kind of thing. In fact, I think they're going to have a table down in Milwaukee, but um, it's literally a group like here in, in Wisconsin and we uh, just enjoy our our thrills of Star Trek, you know, our, our uh, enjoyment of it with each other a lot. So, so yeah, it's both, you know, just kind of fun and silly, and it also has a kind of a deeper meaning for me personally, which is one of the reasons I, I like being a geek, and I feel incredibly fortunate to work in a job where I can feel like I am literally, you know, trying to make this kind of thing happen. So... You know, it's it's funny because I I never really got into Star Trek, and it's absolutely not anything to say the quality of the show. I just never really uh, really reached the fandom. Um, when I was younger, they were renewing Star Wars, you know, so it, it kind of became that. But I do really love William Shatner. He has you know a show called that he was in called Boston Legal. I know this is so random, but I really I really like him because. When I was much younger, uh, Rod Serling's Twilight Zone, it was my one of my favorite shows. It's still probably my favorite show. And um, there's a man on the wing of the plane. Yes. <laughs> this is probably one of the best episodes. And yes. so I remember being younger and seeing him, and it was like, that's the guy. <laughs> So um, that's that's my connection, as, as close of a connection as I can have to the captain. <laughs> I, I feel like I met him before. <laughs> yeah, I, I got to say, we I was watching one of the reruns this morning over breakfast of the original series, and every time somebody tries to make fun of William Shatner's acting in Star Trek, they don't go far enough because nobody can make fun of his acting better than he can. I mean, it's just, <laughs> wow, it's amazing. Um, <laughs> speaking of which, cool thing about today, and if you watch this after September 8th, um, then you are too late, but today um, CBS is doing the uh, Star Trek United Gives, um, and which means that if you use the, st the hashtag Star Trek United Gives uh, between 10 a.m. Uh, Central Time, or no, 12 a.m. until 11.59 p.m. Pacific Time, um, the CBS will donate a dollar to organize to organizations that do things like we do, trying to make the Star Trek universe come into more reality. So um, championing equality, social justice, and scientific advancements, such as NAACP, uh, Legal Defense Co Fund, the National Action Council for Minorities and Engineering, and the Equal Justice Initiative. Um, and so uh, World Builders has definitely done this hashtag. I've done it my own, but if you get a chance, all you have to do is put in this hashtag and you will be contributing a dollar just like that towards um, progressive uh, organizations trying to make the world a better place, kind of like us. Um, oh, we got some comments from other Trekkies. Uh, family spent an entire summer watching the original series every night during dinner. Yeah. That's amazing. That's scary. Did you have a little sky fade? Did you have a favorite uh, episode or character? Thanks, Ryan. Ryan loves the costumes, by the way. I mean, yeah, I that's he didn't, nice. He didn't mention the hundreds of dollars that we spent on the uh, the set design, but, you know. Yeah. <laughs> this is what comes to mind at the moment. This is my house. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I will say I am also really, really looking forward to um, the the next series up. I, I was a little upset about it first because I love Discovery. Discovery is a, I love the series. Heck, I named my dog after a character in Discovery. He is Commander Saru, and he literally sleeps in a command chair and has a Starfleet collar. But um, 
the uh, one of the things that they had in there was they had kind of a throwback to the original Captain of the Enterprise, uh, Pike, from the original series. And it's played by Anson Mount, who I love that actor. And then they said, hey, we're going to make this into a new, um, a new series all of its own. And I'll be honest, I was like, you know... I'm not really thrilled about going back to the 60s level of Captain and things like that. But Rebecca Romaine plays his number one. And I was already a fan of Rebecca Romaine. I was already a fan of number one. And then in one of the short things, she sings Gilbert and Sullivan's Modern Major General. And I am now absolutely in love with Rebecca Romaine because she is a great actress. She plays a great character and can sing patter songs from Pirates of Penzance. So in case you're ever wondering, that that is uh, my sir who commands many pets. He's very good at it. Yes. Yes, he is. So anyway, um, I am excited for the, uh, I can't remember, Strange New Worlds, I think is what it's called, the new series coming out. Um, uh yeah, and we don't digress. Uh, no, we'll no, no, we'll be talking about a couple other things, but it's Star Trek all day long, all <laughs> week long, all year long here. So, <laughs> um, let's see. Hey, I know what we should talk about. Let's talk about another awesome show with captains and things like that. Do you mean one shot? Why, yes, I do. Oh That's boy! All right. Push. Let's push that thing. There we go. I didn't get rid of that one. Good news. Um, Barry is there's not a new... really good on the the uh, OBS today. Oh boy. Uh, yeah. So uh, yeah, one shot podcast. Um, do you want me to cover this, Greg? Absolutely. I've been talking way too much. <laughs> no, we have a new cell in the World Builders Market, um, and we've written here with pins, dice, a T, and more. Um, you can get the collection at, and I'm sure Beth will put the, um, the link in there. One Shot Podcast is um, pretty awesome for those of you who uh, haven't listened to it before. They have a couple, um, I guess, wings within the One Shot Network that are all completely worth uh, watching since they revealed her feelings about Firefly. I can't trust when it comes to fiction. <laughs> uh, thanks, guys. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, actually, we also, James is, um, you know, we really like James D'Amato here. Mel D'Amato serves on World Builders board. They're great people. They have a great network. Um, check it out and check out World Builders Market to see, you know, what kind of merch we carry. They uh, Skyjacks in particular has a logo that I think is super cool. Um, and we have a couple of the merch from, from there in there. Yeah. I also, I'm updating the URL. We made it a little bit easier to get to. Um, and I, I will say I have not, uh, I have not listened yet, gotten to listen yet to the one shot podcast or Skyjacks, but um, when I first saw the merchandise that they were doing, I, I helped, got to help them make the t-shirts and the pins and things. And I was like, I don't even know anything about the show. And I want that. I want that shirt. I want that, um, <clears throat> that pin. Um, and while I don't know anything about that, I do happen to, um, know a bit about the James D'Amato. And, uh, I definitely have to say that while I do trust his judgment in terms of, um, podcasting and things like that. In terms of home furnishings, I have to tell you that um, I definitely think that he uh, he needs to leave that to his spouse, uh, Mel D'Amato, and, and they can make the decisions about um, what chairs come in. And I'm definitely on team by the chair, uh, which won't make much sense to any of you unless you go to his Twitter feed, which I think is One Shot Game Master or something like that, but One Shot Podcast. Um, but yeah, definitely a team by the chair. So hashtag by the chair, team yes. by the chair. <laughs> Boy, if we could, if we could get that trending, that would be awesome. All right, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, check out the collection that we have there. Uh, they're available. This is kind of part of our ongoing thing. Now that the mid season is done, we're bringing some of the products that were um, 
some of the products that were featured there into our store, including these things. And um, uh, we're also, we are done with the pre-orders on the rainbow shirts, but we're gonna take a look and see who ordered the most of what kind, and we'll probably stock those in our store too. So uh, yeah, yeah, that's gonna be changing. Also um, one more announcement. Oh, sorry, Greg. Go ahead, no. Um, we know that some of you really like to be involved in World Builders, um, whether it's trivia participation or just sharing or um, you know, being a part of spreading the Waterton campaigns. Sometimes people want to donate or they want to volunteer, but they don't really have maybe the um, skills or assets we're looking for in that particular moment. And maybe you guys don't necessarily have the funds to be um, get donating and that's completely valid. Um, we do like to still find little ways to have our community involved. Um, one of those ways right now is uh, kind of a fun little thing. We, we are making this World Builders Weekly, you know, a little more official. We're trying to keep up with it, having guests. And um, while we love Beth's intro video, if anybody wants to make an intro video to be uh, shared or, um, you know, perhaps become a permanent part of World Builders Weekly, please feel free to um, make like a Vimeo or a YouTube and link to us in the DMs. Um, you know, if more than one person does it, there's no reason why we can't just keep featuring them and it'd be super fun. Yeah, we, we enjoy all kinds of things like that. <clears throat> and um, yeah, other than that, I can tell you all, just so you know, we are officially 75% of the way through the year right now. I was, I was looking at things like that and we are three quarters of the way through 2020, which means we're almost there. Um, so you know, hang in there. Uh, especially those of you who are hanging out and having smoke from wildfires coming through and things like that. We, uh, we, we love to hear from you and let us know what we can do to brighten your day and things like that. Yeah. Let us know about other authors or creators, gamers or developers or artists and things like that, that you'd like to see. Um, people like Julia Madalena, um, who works with us and has book plates that she's designing and things like that would be a great idea and uh, we are on twitter instagram facebook and of course here on twitch every tuesday at noon so go ahead and yeah us know and let us know and uh one last time i guess worldbuildersmarket.com go there to find cool rare, rare and autographed editions of your favorite books along with fun other geek stuff I'm really bad at signing off for these things, but oh, uh, luckily we have a sign-off word. We do, and this time <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to do my best imitation of Picard doing it. So here we go. <laughs> Vivamoose.